Okay, well, greetings, everyone, and to welcome to another Martinize Mentoring Moment. One of the questions that comes up off and on is COGO, or coordinate geometry, sometimes also done uh, course over ground orientation. Shows up in meets and bounds, typically used in deed plotting and deed recording. So we're going to take away some of the mysteries of how the angles are, are collected, used, and essentially reported. Let's look at a quick example. This is, looks like it's going to be quite detailed, but we'll talk a little bit about each piece. This is a typical text file. This might be a typical flat text file that you would see, uh, minus the comments. All this stuff with the hash marks or the pound signs out here have been added for a little extra. Typically, in one of these deed calls, you'll see a bearing. It'll say north, 10 degrees, 0 minutes, 0 seconds east, 900 feet. And you can translate this as facing north, turn 10 degrees east, so that you can arrive at point number two. The point number one is applied as, as your point of beginning or starting point. The second line is south, 80 degrees, 0 minutes, 0 seconds east, 1,200 feet. Facing south, turn, turn 80 degrees east and arrive at point number three. And this goes on sometimes for hundreds of lines depending on the boundary. We'll do a specific diagram, but I wanted you to see what a typical file looks like that, you, that is often fed into software or will oftentimes report will be reported in a deed. It'll say thence 10 degrees, it'll say thence 10 degrees, 10 to north 10 degrees, 10 degrees east, 900 feet, blah blah blah, arrive at a fence post. Some key notes to pick up in one of these in these files. In general, angles for Kogo meets and bound calls calls A begin with either an N for north or S for south. There's never an east or west in this first column. If there is, something's wrong. Notice that only east and west shows up in the second, and north and south shows up over here. Item B, contained, the beats and bounds calls contain observed horizontal circle angle. Now I'll explain that, and we'll show an instrument example where this horizontal circle angle comes from. And C, all them end with W for east or west. We've just got noted that. There's another key thing to note. No angle will ever exceed 90 degrees in a quadrant in quadrant bearings for meets and bounds. Notice it never exceeds 90. Typically in a regular magnetic compass or for aviation you'll see from 0 to 90 to 180 to 270 and back or a maritime compass. Generally in surveying that's not used because there's a, a very difficult confusion called reciprocal bearing which we will see in a little bit. What happens in the field? Let's look at the next slide. Typically in the field, there's an, an instrument man who's taking the observations. He's got not just a pole, but sometimes a tripod with an instrument. At a distance somewhere that's still visible is a rod man with his range pole. And this is typically the distance it's shot. This is what they call a shot line or, for, or that show up in a traverse record. Notice that P1 is where the instrument observation is occurring, and P2 is the target. So this is from and this is two. That's kind of, I hate to be so detailed on this, but this shows up real often. A lot of people just don't know what happens in the field. Um, not, it's a little beyond this discussion today, but in some, when you're really hilly country or working long distances, notice that ground distance can be longer than sight distance. This will come up once in a while when you go over hills or in some very rough terrain or for some very long shots. All right, so where do the angles come from? You know, the distance can be measured by the chain or with a tape measure or sometimes with a, a laser, laser range finder. Um, but what happens, where do the angles come from? Well, to be consistent with ancient history, so going back sometimes two or three hundred years, we have to look at how angles were measured before people had complex instruments. An observer is in the center of the field. Here's the horizon around the observer. This is north, this is east, the rising sun or the rising moon and stars. This is south, and here is west where the stars and the moon set. Typically, especially in the northern hemisphere, there will be a north celestial pole. This will be the spin axis, the north star will be in this direction. And that's a good indicator of where north is, true north is, um, which is also very helpful finding out magnetic north. Um, observer, let's see, general properties of the sky, what else? Zenith, straight up. And let's see, angles are measured in this horizon. The observer, the instrument man, will look to the north and then he will turn to the east for an angle 
or he will look to the north and turn to the west for an angle if he's going generally north northwest or northeast if the instrument in the survey is going southeast or southwest the instrument man will look to the south and then turn east this will make more sense later when we look at a specific example or the instrument man will look to the south and then turn to the west to measure an angle how are these angles measured well here's a typical old instrument that was routinely used this is a alo compass probably circa 1880s there were even older versions of this going back to the 1600s that were more or less of you know some of them had a magnetic compass and some didn't notice in this the observer the instrument man is looking through a slot and he sights these slots and lines them up on the rod man at a distance once that alignment is set up the angle between the instrument axis optical axis and magnetic north is recorded now magnetic north and true north are not the same but it's a great start especially here in the central united states and the magnetic versus north and true north can be corrected later this provides routine field observations with a very low cost instrument and without a lot of complex complexity for the field operators fighting bugs and bushes while they're taking data okay so what do these do what how do these angles used and how are they reported on a map so here's a typical map notice we have a local compass direction it's always implied that we have some kind of orientation we may have a benchmark that reports a point of beginning for point number one the kickoff point we may have some coordinates from a benchmark, from a known source, from a GPS, something. We don't know. But those will sometimes be report, oftentimes be reported. Sometimes they won't be in a deed. Sometimes you just have to do the geometry and float it around on an air photo to find out where it is. So we begin at the kickoff point. The instrument man sets up over this kickoff point. And the rod man sets up at a distance on point number two. And they measure an angle. They look north and then they tilt 10 degrees to the east looking north 10 degrees to the east and we shoot a distance of 900 feet so that's how you read that looking north turn the horizontal circle 10 degrees east and shoot 900 feet that's how it's reported then this rod man will move to point number two the instrument man will move from point one to point two I'm sorry the rod man will move from point two to point three and the instrument man will move up to point two then they'll make another shot and now in this case it's a little trickier because now we're looking at the southeast quadrant so the instrument man will look south he will report south and then he will turn the instrument 80 degrees looking south turning 80 degrees east measuring a distance of 1200 so you have to imagine in your mind there's this horizontal circle here and the instrument man looked due south first or in the opposite direction of north and then he turned an angle of 80 degrees to pick up this bearing and then he'll report that point number three is located relative to point two south 80 degrees east for 1200 feet all right the rod man and the, and the instrument man will now pick up again the, the rod man will move from point three to point four this may be a fence post a tree a telephone pole who knows what they're doing then the instrument man will set up on point three and he will look south again but then he'll turn 10 degrees to the west so looking south the instrument is turned 10 degrees to the west and we measure a distance of 900 feet and that gets us the traverse from point three to point four finally to close the loop around the property or in this case the survey boundary the instrument man will move to point four the rod man will go back to the point of beginning and set up on point one the instrument man this time will look north then turn the horizontal circle 80 degrees to the west so the instrument man will report bearing looking north we turn 80 degrees to the west and shoot a distance of 1200 feet to arrive at the closure point this essentially completes the survey and these are reported next slide typically in this red box this is a pretty typical reporting mechanism notice that there's oh and the reciprocal bearings notice that this bearing is a reciprocal of this one and that it while it says north here the complementary is south and east over here is west 
ditto for this other bearing. South becomes north and east becomes west. This is pretty typical for reciprocal bearings, part of the reason the quadrant system is used. Okay, to summarize, in a flat text file, point of beginning, bearing angle calls a distance will appear in sequence roughly thus. And this is a more complicated example, but it's pretty typical. Not covered here and missing in action in this simple file, for, file format. What is the datum? Is it NAD 27 or NAD 83? We don't have any idea what they are. There's over 240 known of these worldwide. What is the projection? Is it state plane or UTM? Units, what are the units of measure? Are they meters, U.S. survey feet, or international feet? That's a key thing because U.S. survey feet and international feet differ by two parts in a million. D, bearings, true north and magnetic north or grid north. They make a huge difference, especially if you're in places like Alaska, where magnetic north and true north differ by as much as 40 degrees. And last item here, grid or surface meets and bounds. In most of Texas, surface distance are longer than grid, and that's along that's outside the extent of this discussion. Well, that's it for a quick look on the meets and bounds and bearing angles. Thanks for watching. I hope to visit with you soon again.